In the previous videos, we talked about ways of remembering that sine of negative x is equal to negative sine of x, and that cosine of negative x is equal to cosine of x. In this video, we will talk about yet another way of remembering these properties and we will use the analytic definitions of sine of x and cosine of x. So we can write sine of x as an infinite sum. And we can do the same for cosine of x. Much the same way, for example, that we can write e to the x, right? We could write that as the infinite sum from 0 to infinity whereby we raise x to the nth power and divide by n factorial. Right? So you can see that all three of these have the same form. We're raising x to some power and dividing by some factorial. And in fact, all three of these are related, but the only ones we'll need for this video are these two, of course. So let's start with cosine of negative x. You can see here, since we have an even exponent that it doesn't really matter if we put in for example a negative 3 for x or a 3 for x if we're raising it to an even power what will come out will always be positive so that already gives us a hint that this property is going to be true right cosine of negative x is going to be the same thing as cosine of x but let's write that out formally so we have cosine of negative x is equal to we can keep everything else the same in this infinite sum. So we have a negative 1 to the n, and now we'll sub in our negative x for x. So we're raising negative x to the 2n power and dividing by 2n factorial. Now, as we talked about before, this might as well just be an x since it doesn't make any difference, the negative sign is going to disappear anyway. So let's write that, that that way. So we'll keep our negative 1 to the n here. We'll just write out x to the 2n and dividing by 2n factorial. And what we have here is indeed exactly this analytic definition of cosine. So we can just write cosine of x. And we've already proved that this property holds. So now let's move on to sine of negative x. So we can see here already that again we have an exponent. x is being raised to some power and this time it is odd and that's going to make the difference. So we have sine of negative x is equal to I'm just going to sub in a negative x where we had a positive before. Negative x to the 2n plus 1 power and divide by 2n plus 1 factorial. Okay, this time the negative sign is going to survive the exponentiation process, so to speak, right? If we raise this implicit negative 1 here to some odd power. It's still going to remain a negative 1. So let's separate these here, these two parts of negative x. Everything else will keep the same. So we have negative 1 to the nth power. Again, the denominator will remain the same. And here on top we have x being raised to the 2n plus 1 and negative 1 being raised to the 2n plus 1. But if we think about it, negative 1 to the 2n plus 1 is just the same thing as negative 1, right? So we could just leave off that exponent there, which is nice because now this term no longer depends on n. In other words, we can pull it out in front of our summation symbol and write everything else the same as it was before. So again, we have our negative 1 to the nth power 
and x being raised to the 2n plus 1 and again dividing by 2n plus 1 factorial. And what do we have here? That is just the analytic definition of sine. So if we remember our negative 1 here we have negative sine of x and we see that again this property holds. So the trick here is not every time to to go through these formal proofs of these characteristics but just to look at the exponent. If you see that x is being raised to an even exponent then we're going to have an even function. In this case cosine of x. Now if our x is raised to an odd exponent then we are going to have our odd function here sine of x. Of course you could use this trick the other way around. That is if you wanted to try to remember the analytic definitions of sine and cosine then you could use these properties to help you figure them out.